So NVIDIA just deleted the GeForce Experience app and the NVIDIA control panel, and it's now all into the brand new NVIDIA app. Now, this is probably old news because you've seen the thousands of videos about them. So I'm not gonna talk about it too much. You're basically forced to have the new app, even if you don't want to, if you update the drivers. And uh, it's actually better, okay? So it's not a bad thing for once. It doesn't require a login. I kind of fear they're gonna put a login there very soon, but so far, no login. It's good, but if you don't set it right, you're probably losing performance. And if you do set it right, you can gain a lot of performance in games. And also, they now added an overclocking tab. Does it mean all my undervolting and overclocking tutorials are now useless? Well, let's go take a look in this NVIDIA app tuning guide to make your PC run faster, get you some extra FPS. But first, promise me one thing, okay? So if the video ends up being helpful, in the end, just drop a like, maybe subscribe to thank me. Let's go in the app. Okay, so here we are actually in the new NVIDIA app. Now in the first tab, the home, you can basically just get all the NVIDIA features, but there's nothing to tweak. So I say we start from the bottom. Let's start from settings, okay? So if you use the overlay to actually uh, capture clips, screenshots, etc., then leave it enabled. If not, disable it. Game filters and photo mode, it looks bad, just take it off. Drivers, uncheck this one because you want to just do it manually. You don't want your PC just doing things for you. This is key. Uncheck the automatically optimized newly added game and snaps because, because the settings applied are never as good as the ones you can do yourself. So this one too. Then let's go into notifications over here and uh, uncheck the rewards. I like to keep my driver updates notifications, but you can also disable this one if you want. And then under about, I don't want the early access at the moment because I want just stable things because it's my main build. And then I just uncheck all the data for NVIDIA because, you know, I don't want a process running in the background. Then under redeem, you can just get free stuff. We don't care about it. Let's now go under system. Okay. So if you have a G-Sync monitor, be sure to enable it if you want to use it. But little tip, at the moment, I'm not using it because I found... Um, if you exceed the number of hertz of your monitor, in my case, 100 hertz, with your minimum FPS, then you want this disabled. Because basically G-Sync just adds some latency, so if you're playing competitively, and if you make the frames, you want this disabled. If you are under, definitely enable this one. Okay, so this is pretty cool. This was basically the control panel option, and you now have it here. So you can change, for example, the resolution, the refresh rate, make sure your refresh rate is on maximum as well. And now let's go into video. Now on video, RTX video enhancement. Now this is pretty cool. Basically, it will improve the quality of YouTube videos and stuff, but it's gonna draw a lot of power. So at the moment I'm not using it and I have it on off. And the same thing for HDR. I just don't like how it looks. So you have it disabled. But of course, if you have an HDR monitor, enable this one. Then under performance, we have the very much talked about overclocking tab, which is terrible. I just tell you, you don't need to do anything in here. This is actually a lot worse than afterburner. The only thing it lets you change is voltage percentage, which is not even voltage. So you don't have to touch this power limit. Yeah, you can put this one to maximum if you do have more than 100, which I don't have, but you can also do this in afterburner while undervolting or overclocking, so I don't see the need. Temperature target, and then you can set up a, a custom fan curve. I actually have a video on a fan curve I recommend over here in case you wanna copy it, but I recommend you put it in MSI afterburner, which works for every GPU, even non-MSI ones, and it's very light. I find it works better than NVIDIA app. Now, automatic tuning, is basically a curve optimizer like the one in Afterburner, which as we discovered in the past, isn't really ideal. It's just better to go ahead and do a manual overclock because this one sometimes is a state is because this one is very often unstable in some points of the curve. It's tough to test it all and you gain very little performance wise. So I prefer just manual tuning and it's why I have a full GPU overclocking, GPU undervolting playlist, which is still gonna be valid even after this. So the performance tab is useless. Then my rig is pretty cool. You can just see what you're running. As you can see, I have a Ryzen 7 9700X because I think it's the best value CPU at the moment. Now, under graphics is where we can change quite a lot, okay? And it's the last tab because in drivers, you can just update your driver. So in graphics, we wanna first go into global settings. And now I'm gonna give you settings for more FPS for competitive gaming, okay? So 
RTX, we want it off. GPU, make sure your main GPU is selected. Then DSR off, image scaling off. Low latency mode ultra, but this, if you have an older GPU, you may want to just leave it on on. If you're having frame lag issues, you can try disabling this one, putting it on on, but always keep it on. Then max frame rate off, because if we want to frame cap a game, we want to do it from inside the game. Monitor technology, of course, if you have G-Sync and you want to use it, pick G-Sync. Me, as I told you, I'm exceeding the frame rate, so I'm going with fixed refresh. Then power management mode, prefer maximum performance. Shader cache size, driver default. This, in some games, you may have a little gain by putting it on unlimited, but it's going to just uh, clog your hardware, so I prefer to leave it on driver default. Vertical sync, you want it off, unless in some games you use G-Sync. Virtual reality, variable super rate sampling off. And this is about it. Now, this is it for the global settings. The global setting is going to be basically what we do for every single game. Then if you go under program setting, do not click optimize, okay? It's terrible. And then you want to manually tweak it. Now, what I like to do is to just change it in game directly. I find it works better than changing it here. Also because very often it doesn't let you change it here. It's just going to tell you what you should do. So here I wouldn't touch anything and I would just optimize it in game. For example, I'll show you my Black Ops 6 uh, competitive settings. Just do a scroll through in case you guys want to copy it. And also my Apex Legends one, since they are competitive gaming. And really, this is it. There's nothing else you can do in this app. It's pretty simple to do, but I think if you do it, the PC is going to run a bit better. And it's important that you do it. So the video is over. And if you thought it was helpful, again, drop a like and a sub. And if you want to get actually a lot more performance out of your system, consider overclocking, undervolting. And for that, I have guides for every single CPU and GPU on the channel. I hope to see you guys again. Bye-bye.